A full melt pool describes the time when the melted wax reaches the edge of the container. Is this a sign of a well-built candle or does it spell disaster? That's the topic of today's video. Welcome back to Armitage Candle Company, the premier online resource for accelerating your candle making technique and business. And today we're talking about melt pools. Some argue that the length of time that a melt pool should take to form across your candle is based on the diameter of that candle. This is called the diameter rule. And it means that for every inch of your diameter, it should take that much time in hours for a full melt pool to form. So if you have a two inch diameter candle, this length here, it should take two hours for a full melt pool to form. Three and a half inches, three and a half hours. 3.75 inches, three hours and 45 minutes. You kind of get the idea there. But is this good advice? Well, I would argue that basing your success of your candle on just the diameter rule alone is actually terrible advice and it has three major flaws that we're gonna cover today. First is that safety of your candle isn't based on the melt pool at all. Container candles are always a fire hazard, so safety needs to be an absolute necessity priority for all candle makers everywhere. And unfortunately, the safety standards really don't care about the melt pool. Now, our safety standards do care about the integrity of the container, how hot it gets, and like the height of the flame, among a few other things. Like, it doesn't matter how good the candle smells if it isn't safe. And the melt pool doesn't actually help us indicate whether it's safe. Now you may say, well, if a melt pool forms at a certain rate, doesn't that kind of tell us how hot it's gonna be? Like if it, if it follows the one inch per hour rule, isn't that fair enough to say it'll be safe? Well, kind of, I mean, it, it is related to the heat of the candle and we'll get to that. But just because it meets that diameter rule does not in any way guarantee that it's gonna meet the rest of the safety requirements that we have. If you wanna learn more about burn testing, like how do we know if it's safe, check out this video. The second major flaw in this logic is that melt pool timing changes over the life of the candle. When you're near the top of the candle, melt pools are gonna form slower. When you're further down halfway, halfway or below, that melt pool is gonna form a lot faster. So that one inch per hour is actually gonna be totally sideways by the time you reach halfway through. Now, why is this? Well, when you burn the candle initially, most of that heat's gonna escape out here. But when you're lower down, the heat from the flame is gonna be captured in the walls and a lot more heat is going to melt more wax directly below it. So candles will burn a little bit hotter the further down you get into your container. Now the container design impacts this to a degree, but going back to the diameter rule, if you assume that that is good up here, well, your answer is gonna be wrong by the time you get down here. It's gonna be going way faster down here. So do you size for down here or up here? And hint, I'm gonna say that you shouldn't be sizing for the melt pool at all, but like it kind of throws that entire logic into whack when you consider that the melt pool rate changes based on where you are in the candle. The third flaw is that hot throw is just barely based on the melt pool size. Now we know that the melt pool has an impact on the scent throw of the candle, but how much really does it have? Well, there's two things when it comes to the melt pool and wax that contribute to scent throw. First is melted wax, that's the melt pool, but the second is melting wax, wax that is constantly being melted, releasing a lot more of those vapors. Now, hot throw is actually more of a function of the wick alone than it is of anything else, and the melt pool is just a symptom of that wick. So if you have a really high wick, if your wick is way too hot, that melt pool is gonna form really fast, but there'll also be extra heat, and it may actually throw really well, but it may be totally unsafe. So the wick, it's really the central part of any candle design. If you can't get the wick right, it's unlikely that you're gonna be safe or that you're gonna perform well at the same time. And the melt pool is merely just a symptom of wick selection. So when you wanna talk about, hey, if we follow the diameter rule, our scent throw should be great. Well, kind of, maybe, but really it's more on your wick choice, which impacts way more than just the melt pool as far as how well that thing's gonna throw a scent. So if you're gonna focus on anything at all, don't focus on following that diameter rule, focus on picking a wick that tests safe and that performs well because that wick impacts a lot more than just the melt pool alone. Okay, but none of that answers the question, how long should it take to get to a full melt pool? And the answer is 
don't pay attention to it. We ultimately just want a successful candle. We want a candle that we like, that's good, that we can sell, that we can burn, that we can enjoy. And there's only two things that we need to worry about for that. The first is safety, and the second is hot throw. And to judge safety, it's pretty simple. There's a standard test that we use in the candle making industry to judge the success of a container candle's burning ability. And that is the ASTM 2417 base test. We've done a ton of videos about it, so check those out up here. And the second is hot throw. How do we test hot throw? Well, scent is a little bit subjective because some people are more sensitive to smells than others and some, like, they don't smell it at all even though everybody else in the room is opening windows at that time. And we judge the success of hot throw based on what I call the blow test. We do it, test the candle in the bathroom, the living room, and with others and try to gather an aggregate opinion on that candle or just go your own way, live your life and do your thing and don't worry about it as much. But safety always needs to be tested, especially if you're selling candles. One last thing about the diameter test. If you do get the one inch per hour when you burn your candle up here, it's very likely it's gonna be way too hot by the time you get down here, and that is a safety hazard. You can fact check me. Just do a standard safety test on a candle that does meet the diameter rule up here near the top, and tell me if it succeeds or fails when you get halfway or below, and my guess is it's gonna be burning a little bit too hot. Those walls are gonna be unsafe to touch, hotter than a cup of coffee. So I'll leave you with this. If you're gonna judge the success of your candle, stay away from that rule of thumb. Stay away from the diameter rule. Instead, focus on the industry standard test and the blow test. Anyways, that's all I have. Hope you have a great week, and I'll see you in the next one.